inside and outside and let's bless the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, oh Lord. Blessed be your name, oh Lord. Give him praise. Blessed be the one who reigns forever. Blessed be your name. and just worship him tell him lord i give you praise hosanna in the highest we bless you great testimonies by his spirit the bible says it's not by power it's not by might it's by my spirit these are not the works of men for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise i magnify your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise Magnify One more time for the things For the things You have done And the battles You have won Only you are worthy Of my praise I magnify Your name Jesus we want to say thank you We are not ungrateful people Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in this place. Thank you for doing wonders in our midst. Lord, we give you all the praise. You are faithful. Thank you for the miracles, breakthroughs, the liftings. We thank you. Hallelujah. How many of you will agree that the Lord has been faithful to us in this place? hallelujah these are not the workings of men friends there is one who is greater than the greatest higher than the highest is the only one who deserves the praise hallelujah we are only but vessels hallelujah he's the only one who deserves to be praised and that's why we are really giving him all the praise Hallelujah. You do want to see our meet. Oh, hallelujah. Can you bless him with this song? You do want to see our meet. You do want to say. You do want to see our meet. He's a faithful God. Hey, faithful God. Say 
is the Holy Spirit who gives life to this world. The Bible says in John 6, 63, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, Ezekiel speaking said, the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. There is an activity of the Holy Ghost as the word comes. Hallelujah. That's why we take our time to worship the Lord. We are not just doing religious ceremonies. Hallelujah. Father, we truly thank you. We truly, truly thank you for your faithfulness. We are not ashamed to declare that we are nothing without you. Hallelujah. Bless us tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk up to 10 people, tell them God is still transforming people. Make sure you do it with a smile on your face. You may be greeting the next president, the next prime minister, the next CEO. Come on, take it seriously. Hallelujah. Be gloriously seated. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. It's good to have us again. We've been on a series of teaching on the kingdom. How many of you have been blessed by the kingdom series? Teaching us how to understand the system of God and to walk in harmony with His ways and His principles. Hallelujah. Tonight, I will not be talking on the kingdom series. We still have one or two topics to cover under the kingdom series hallelujah we we'll still be talking about the culture of the kingdom and then we'll end it with um, what theologians call help me son eschatology hallelujah eschatology is the study of the end times hallelujah it gives us a panorama of the whole activities that surround the end time the bible says how that john was speaking he said i was i john was in the spirit on the lord's day and he was caught up and he began to see several things and he was given an instruction he said right the things that were the things that are and the things that will happen thereafter hallelujah and he began to write a letter to the seven churches across asia minor which are as a prophetic symbolism of the entire span of the church age hallelujah and then in chapter 4 he said i heard a voice and he said unto me come up hither and i will show you the things that will happen thereafter and then we read about the vials and the plagues and the manifestation of the angels hallelujah then we begin to study about several things what people call the tribulation how that the kings of gog and magog according to the revelation that was given to daniel he had a figure standing made of clay made of bronze made of steel you know all of these things were representing the dispensation of different kings hallelujah we take our time to discuss what these prophetic things mean because if all we know is how to reign in life alone without knowing the future of the church then we have all made most miserable hallelujah we need to understand the future of the church age and then we study how that the bible says there was 30 minutes in heaven we we'll also try to um, answer the question of um, the pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation or post-tribulation manifestation. Hallelujah. The concept of rapture. Is there an event in the Bible called rapture? Hallelujah. And then we we'll get to talk about what will happen, the millennial reign of Christ and how that Satan through the instrumentality of the Antichrist will be let loose and will deceive many and torture believers the bible gives us an understanding of a mark and um, an activity of satan upon people and he called it the number he coded it and he called it 666 what is the concept of 666 what's the mystery behind 666 hallelujah and is the antichrist alive right now who is the antichrist what is his government like 
hallelujah we begin to trace the government of the antichrist from cain and then we'll consider the mystery of babel the tower of babel and then we'll come to babylon and egypt and we'll run a a line beginning to help us understand the structure of the antichrist government hallelujah and then we'll discuss about the two witnesses hallelujah people say it's moses and elijah is that true or not we'll find out when we are discussing that statement then the destruction of babylon the bible begins to speak about babylon talks about a harlot who sits upon a horse holding wine that was the cup of the matthias hallelujah then there was a shout and he said babylon the great is falling her and all the kings of the earth who have made merchandise and have benefited from a hollow tree then the bible tells us about four horses and certain people that were seated on those horses and the bible tells us that death was one of the spirits that was sitting upon the horse i'll be proving to you that hell is not just a location hell is a spirit hallelujah death is a spirit the bible says how that death hell and the grave will be defeated and will be cast into the lake of fire we see the difference between hell fire and the lake of fire hallelujah then when satan is bound the thousand year the millennial reign of christ what does that mean to the church then the last battle of armageddon when all the kings of the east who set themselves against god's israel hallelujah and then revelations 19 begins to give us a picture of one upon a white horse hallelujah how that a double-edged sword will proceed from his mouth and will cause a great slaughter then the bible ends with what we call the great white throne judgment hallelujah what is the difference between what we call judgment day and the great white throne judgment because the bible makes us to understand that there are two kinds of judgments and then the eternal destiny of the saints hallelujah this will be um i hope that we'll consider that the next time but for now we're not going to be taking that teaching i want to just help us understand the scripture that god laid in my heart and then we'll pray hallelujah blessed is he who comes in the name of our god some days ago the lord showed me a vision and uh, i saw a stream flowing and as the stream was flowing it began to separate itself into different channels and i saw how that there were different treasures in the channels and people were running to one and then to another running to one and to another and i just stood watching hallelujah and then i found out that other people were some of the um, they were like fruits from one of the stream i don't know i've never seen a stream delivering fruits hallelujah but then some people will eat it and will enjoy certain levels of divine health but i found out that they were not happy they were not joyful and then i saw others who would drink from a stream and then they'll just begin to laugh laugh in the spirit hallelujah and then i had a loud voice and he said unto me all the streams are necessary and that was all all the streams are necessary hallelujah and then i began to ponder on this scripture because when god speaks to me if i don't understand i just keep quiet hallelujah and then god began to teach me something about the operation of the spirit and how that lots of believers have not been able to experience the fullness of the activity of the spirit in their life because we do not understand how to place a demand on his multifaceted dimensions and that's what i'm going to be teaching tonight hallelujah so let your heart be open because this teaching is very prophetic tonight and i trust that we pray as i teach there will be all kinds of impartations just coming the spirit of wisdom and revelation hallelujah let's start with um isaiah isaiah 11 isaiah 11 please make sure you came with something to write if you didn't just find your neighbor i told you that we teach the word here so when you come come with something to write lord let your word come with power let it come with grace 
the name of Jesus. Shipa kabo da kabasi kete balaraba. Di kabo shanda brakete bosi kata brande kete balaraba se bosi kata maria bakaya. Brike bosi da balarashti. I sense that there is an operation of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. There is a strong operation of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. A strong operation of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. A strong operation of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Paul said, For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and understanding. He said, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened flooded with light that you will see cause our eyes to see oh god it takes the spirit of god to grant us illumination into the world for the bible says when jesus rose up from the dead there were two men who were walking with him on their way to emmaus although he was the miracle worker the savior the one who was the talk of the town they were with him but they could not recognize because their eyes were closed and the bible says when he sat at table with them and break the bread then their eyes were opened every time there is the breaking of the bread there is a release of the spirit of revelation causing our eyes to see things that the ordinary man cannot see job said there is a path where the eyes of the vulture has not seen and a road where the lion has not trodden upon that's our desire to press into those realms that will grant us access to rule in the day and to rule in the night say amen isaiah 11 verse 1 and there shall come forth a rod please can you increase the volume and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots he said the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord and he shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears hallelujah the bible in isaiah chapter 11 gives us what we call in the church environment the manifestation of or the seven spirits of god hallelujah now when we talk about the seven spirits of god we're not talking about seven different spirits hallelujah we're talking about the complete manifestation of the spirit for the number seven in the realm of the spirit is a prophetic number for perfection and wholeness and completion hallelujah he used seven days to create man in the seventh day god rested hallelujah so the number seven stands for perfection and completion the seventh angel in revelation chapter 11 verse 15 sounded his trumpet and there were voices saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our god and of his christ and he shall reign so seven symbolizes the number of perfection seven lampstands seven candlesticks hallelujah seven prophetic manifestations of the spirit and so the bible here tells us that the spirit of the lord what is the spirit of the lord the spirit of the lord stands for the word lord there is it, it refers to the spirit of dominion are you following me now the spirit of the lord talks about that dimension of the holy spirit that postures your spirit in a way and a manner that you begin to manifest in the power and the authority of the kingdom that's the dimension of the holy spirit that causes the word of god to come alive in you and you begin to function in a dimension of authority called exousia the capacity to stand and legislate on behalf of the parliament of heaven hallelujah there is an operation of the spirit that is quickened and furnished in your person that causes you to comprehend the word of god brings you to a position where you begin to understand your rights and your privileges in christ are you following me now and you begin to see that he has given me authority over snakes and scorpions is the manifestation of that spirit that causes that dimension of the world to be quickened in you 
so that you can stand and decree and declare the Bible says that ye shall decree a thing and it shall be established hallelujah Daniel 11 chapter uh, chapter 11 verse 32 says they that know their God he said they shall be strong and they shall do exploits so there is a manifestation of that spirit it's called the spirit of the Lord the spirit of dominion the oppression of the Holy Ghost that causes you to walk in tremendous realms of authority and power and there are many believers who have had access and they can stand and legislate on behalf of heaven hallelujah and they look at a door and command that door to be closed and the door is opened and then they can look at a situation and command the effort to be open and is open commanding authority over territories and nations they can stand and legislate on behalf of continents and territories and speak over africa and say be open there is a an operation of the holy spirit that brings you to that level he shows you by his word and he empowers you to walk in the reality of that world hallelujah then the spirit of wisdom and of understanding the bible says in the book of proverbs it said but not wisdom cry hallelujah he personifies wisdom he said get wisdom get understanding hallelujah the spirit of wisdom that is another activity of the holy ghost that he begins to furnish in your person he brings you to a level where you begin to comprehend the ways of god the wisdom of god is his word his ways he teaches you how to walk in the ways and the path of god he said thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path and so there is an activity of the holy ghost that causes the word of god to begin to guide you you begin to make intelligent decisions after the character of the kingdom hallelujah wisdom is to know what to do understanding is to know how to do it the steps to take wisdom is to know what to do hallelujah but understanding tells you how to do it and that's why the bible says in all thy getting even if you come to a point where you know what to do you need to know how to do it hallelujah wisdom is to know that you make fried rice by bringing rice and bringing what again all of those things tomatoes liver and so on and so forth understanding is to know how to combine the ingredients are you following me now so you can have wisdom enough to go to the market understanding tells you that when only one person is eating you don't put a handful of salt are you following me now wisdom tells you salt is required to make the food tasty but understanding begins to guide you through the processes and the steps he said in all thy getting get understanding so there is the activity of the holy ghost that brings you to a point where you know god's ways and you understand how to take steps and get that result it's an operation of the holy spirit and then there is the spirit of the of counsel and might the spirit of counsel and my Paul prayed a prayer he said I pray that you be strengthened in your inner man that's the operation of the spirit of might he brings you to a point where you walk in tremendous strength and ability grace and stamina for the journey are you following me now physical and spiritual strength that was a dimension of the Holy Ghost that was at work in Samson I hope you know that Samson was not a macho man otherwise Delilah would not be asking him for the secret of his strength there was an activity an operation of the spirit of might upon him I'm sure he was like me hallelujah so don't take us for granted there is an activity of the Holy Ghost <laughs> I understand how God created me that's why I don't look for trouble I prefer to speak the word <laughs> hallelujah the spirit of counsel the Bible says you shall hear a voice from behind saying to you this is the way Isaiah 30 walk ye in it the counsel of the spirit they 
David said in the I mean um, um, Daniel he said in the night time in the night time when men sleep then the Spirit of God begins to communicate the counsel and then there is the spirit of knowledge the word knowledge there yeah, is not just the word is the word epignosis the highest dimension of knowledge hallelujah it's not knowledge that is as a result of experience it's knowledge that is an impartation from the spirit knowledge that is beyond your age beyond your level of exposure beyond your intellect it's a dimension of knowledge hallelujah that's the manifestation of the holy spirit that causes what we call the word of knowledge when you walk up to someone and say your name is this and that I know you from this and that you do not have any personal responses I mean you any personal relationship with the person hallelujah but by the operation of that spirit you can comprehend certain things hallelujah that was the spirit that was working Daniel that made him ten times better hallelujah and then he says the spirit and of the fear of the Lord that word in Hebrew or that phrase in Hebrew is Yirat Adonai the spirit of reverence doesn't talk about fear in our sense of fear but the spirit of reverence there is an activity of the Holy Spirit that comes upon you that causes you to revere him so after singing I am a friend of God I am a friend of God you know you come to a point where you think you begin to rock shoulders with God and then the spirit of reverence comes upon you Isaiah had that manifestation from chapter 1 he began to prophesy and then in chapter 6 he said in the year that King Uzziah died I Isaiah saw the Lord he was high and lifted up he said the train of his robe filled the temple there was an impartation of the spirit of reverence hallelujah and that's one manifestation that many people in the church age do not have that's the reason why people can bribe and cheat in church people can do all kinds of things and you wonder do these people really fear God why don't you say do these people really have knowledge fear God the spirit of reverence coming to a point where you don't just believe in God you respect him hallelujah now let me tell you something when you get born again and the spirit of God comes understand this the Holy Spirit comes upon you but I want you to know that these manifestations are not experienced automatically this is where my message starts tonight are you following me now as you begin to walk in the spirit the Holy Ghost causes you to see the dimensions of the Holy Spirit that are available to be accessed in his word are you following me now every time you study the word you begin to see certain dimensions of the spirit hallelujah and for every time you see the holy ghost begins to put a hunger for the dimension that he wants you to operate are you following me now so as you begin to study suddenly you find out that there is something about the operation of him being the spirit of reverence and as you begin to place a demand in the spirit by praying and by staying in his presence you give him access to begin to reveal that dimension of him in you are you following me now so many believers think the moment you have the spirit you have these sevenfold manifestations no the holy spirit comes upon you but wait for your hunger to place a demand on the dimension of him that you would want him to show you there are several dimensions of him as revealed in scripture and it is the dimension that you place a demand on in the realm of the spirit that you see him revealed hallelujah the bible makes us to understand in exodus chapter 31 the bible says when moses received the blueprint of the tabernacle from the mountain the bible says there was a dimension of the holy spirit that came upon an ordinary man called bezalel hallelujah he said i have anointed bezalel and there was an operation of the holy spirit that imparted creativity supernatural insight and creativity in bezalel so that he would build the house according to pattern for he was instructed upon the mount that he would have to build the house according to pattern 
Hallelujah. And all the descriptions were given by God meticulously and he needed someone with an unusual operation of the Spirit. And then the Spirit of God came upon Bezalel. Hallelujah. So there are several dimensions. I hope you know that the Holy Spirit is God. Say after me, the Holy Spirit is God. Many people reduce him to an archangel. Many people reduce him to a wind or a Pentecostal phenomenon. No, the Holy Spirit is God. He's as vast as God is. And so for you to experience his fullness in your life, you must search through the world and find out every time the Holy Spirit operated through a man, he didn't operate all his dimensions through one man. So when you study through the lives of several people, the patriarchs of old, one of the things that their lives reveal to us is the dimensions of the Holy Spirit that can be available. I follow me now. So that we will follow them who through faith and patience, we will begin to place a demand and say, Holy Ghost, you operated a strange dimension to a man. There was a dimension of wisdom that Solomon walked in. What is that dimension? There was a dimension of the prophetic that David wrote in. That although he was in the Old Testament, he was able to access realities of the New Testament. For instance, it was David who said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That was the activity of the coronation of Jesus. According to Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 11. Hallelujah. How did David see these things? In Psalm 100, he said something. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. How did David know that the courts of God had gates? He said, and into his courts with praises. The prophet began to speak in Isaiah. He said, I will give you a garment of praise. How did he know that praise was a garment in the realm of the spirit? He said, I will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That you will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of our Lord. So all of these people through, when you study scripture, you see the operation of the Holy Spirit through several people. Even in the prophetic, there were different dimensions of his operation. You find out that Paul was an apostle. Peter was an apostle. All of these people had unique manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now when you study these things, the Holy Ghost begins to quicken in you the dimensions of him that he wants you to experience. And through your hunger and pressing, you can begin to place a demand and say, Spirit of the living God, I desire to encounter you as the spirit of creativity. And suddenly you begin to see him reveal that operation of himself in you. Are you following me now? This is a powerful revelation. That's what the Lord was showing me. There were different streams. The Bible says in Isaiah, in Ezekiel chapter 47, how that from the east side of the temple, there was a river that began to flow from the temple. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that he measured a thousand cubits and he was to my feet. And then he measured a thousand cubits and he was to the knees. He measured a thousand cubits. He was to his chest. He measured a thousand cubits and it was a river. And he said wherever that river went, it caused all the fishes that were dead to come alive. These were the operations of the spirit. The Bible also tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 2, how that there was a river that came out from the east of Eden and it parted itself into four dimensions hallelujah these are the manifestations and the operations of the spirit but when we just sit down and feel that all to the holy ghost is praying in tongues no we we need to begin to place a demand on several dimensions of him that will be required to accomplish the tasks that are before us for there is no man who can do anything outside of the spirit of god Bible makes us to understand that a supernatural grace for leadership and administration came upon a man called Joseph and he was able to administrate and save a nation from famine. These are all the operations of the spirit that are available to us. Hallelujah. That's the reason why you can find someone walking in kingdom authority, making decrees, but making absolutely foolish decisions. Because we have crippled the operation of the Holy Spirit by stereotyping him to only the spirit of dominion. Hallelujah. And 
then we have others who will not walk in dominion but will walk in great wisdom and in understanding we must experience the fullness of the spirit by searching our lives to see the dimensions of him that we have not allowed to begin to find expression and to begin to place a prophetic demand on those dimensions and Jimmy shared a scripture some days ago and I've been meditating on that scripture hallelujah great servant of God with an awesome teaching grace and he began to share how that do you know that the first manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Bible was not as one who will call sons into glory but as the spirit of creativity the first manifestation of the Holy Ghost in the Bible the first manifestation of the world in the Bible was not for healing it was for creativity the first manifestation of the Father in the Bible was for creativity isn't that amazing that gives us a picture of God's original desire for us because at that time man had not fallen man had not even been created all the other functions of the Holy Spirit had to evolve as a result of the needs and the fall of man if man never fell we will never know God as Savior I hope you know that so the fall of man although it was bad but it gave us an opportunity to see the vastness and the multifaceted dimension that exists in this deity called God so in him is the creator in him is the savior in him is the redeemer in him is wisdom in him is understanding and that's why he told Moses I am that I am when you begin to experience all of these multifaceted dimensions of the Holy Spirit it brings you to a point where you become a true worshiper because then you understand that he is big then you can sing that song you are bigger than what we say 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 you are bigger than what we say say you cannot call him big if all you have experienced is just the spirit of dominion until you taste all taste and see that the lord is good place a demand on every dimension of the operation of the spirit that you have not seen at work in your life and I've been praying this scripture. I said, Lord, manifest in me as the spirit of creativity. The Bible talks about men coming up with witty inventions as a result of the operation of the spirit. You know what? This teaching helps you so that whenever you are taking your journey through life, you will know what dimensions of the Holy Spirit are responsible for commanding certain breakthroughs. When you need to make a wise decision, you don't need him to manifest as the spirit of the Lord. You need him to manifest as the spirit of counsel and might. And the Lord showed me in the vision this stream is parting and he told me all of them are necessary. In other words, you should circuit your spiritual progress and the height to which you can attain in the spirit when you limit the Holy Ghost to just one person or one dimension hallelujah he is also called the spirit of prayer and intercession there is an operation there is a dimension of him that supplies grace grace to stay in the place of prayer so that you don't pray for five minutes and just believe that you are finished praying there is an activity of the spirit that's why the psalmist said quicken us and we will call upon your name grant us strength there is an operation of the holy spirit that grants you grace to stay in the journey that's what the bible calls the spirit of mind that when you are riding against the trend all kinds of persecution there is an operation that grants you the staying grace he said though he slay me yet will i praise him Job's wife said, curse God and die. And he said, why do you talk like one of these stupid women? An activity of the Holy Spirit that gives you stamina through the storm. And men look at you riding through something that is killing others. And like Job, you said, though he slay me, yet 
what will I bless you? And men look at you and say, what kind of strength are you standing with? What operation of the spirit is making you stand when you should compromise? There is an energy. It comes from the Greek word energes to energize, to supply with power. Activity of the spirit. Because as you begin to rise, there are all kinds of things that happen to you. That was the operation that was at work in people like Stephen when they were about to martyr him. In spite of all of that persecution, he looked at them and said, forgive them. The only one that prayed the same prayer that Jesus prayed. And although they were stoning him, there was a staying grace. The Bible says his face lit like that of an angel and Stephen full of the Holy Ghost. Many believers are not able to stand through harsh situations because we have not placed a demand on that dimension of the Holy Spirit that supplies grace in that area of need. So people just look at you and say, Ah, Ejimi, Ejimi is not a real man of God. Exposed. He doesn't, he's not ordinary. Forget about all these things you are seeing. And then you begin to cry and say, God, I will not do it again. Oh, nah, you need to pray and place a demand on that dimension of the Holy Spirit that gives you strength for the journey. Then the voice of God will come, Lo, I am with you. Always. It is a always. It's a always. Hallelujah. It's my desire that we experience the fullness of the person of the Holy Spirit. That we come to a point where we can tap into his multifaceted dimensions and then we begin to rule and reign and when you are hard pressed like Paul you say we have been pressed and then they see you smiling through a storm that should kill people you know what dimension of the spirit to operate when people begin to persecute you on account of righteousness you begin to pray and say thank you there is strength in my inner man I am energized by the spirit When your parents look at you and say, I'm sure you'll be a failure. You are a stupid person. They call you, they say, idiot, where is he? Humanly speaking, it has the tendency to demoralize your psychology, but not when the spirit of might is at work in you. You will smile through something that should demoralize you, and you see it as a challenge. And you say, it does not yet appear what we shall be like. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. The saints of old made themselves guinea pigs to reveal to our generation the dimensions of the Holy Spirit that are available. But can I tell you something? There are other dimensions that they have not seen that our generation will open up to the body. There are certain dimensions of the Spirit that have not yet been experienced even by the patriarchs that's the reason why we must stay sensitive because times will come when we will see certain operations of the spirit that we if we are not careful we will not agree with because it does not meet our traditional and our religious regimens Stephen revealed I mean um, Philip revealed something about the spirit the Bible says how that the spirit transported him that's an operation of the Holy Spirit that our generation at a time will place a demand on. Hmm. Everything you see scattered in Scripture, and that the Holy, there are certain things that the Holy Ghost begins to incubate in your spirit. And at first you will be afraid because you cannot find the Scripture to back it. But as you study and as you progress in your work with the Spirit, you begin to find out that although you may not see it yet, it is consistent with the universal character of God. These are archives. And all, some of them are futuristic. The church may not begin to work in them corporately. But a time will come when God will compel you to begin to place a demand. I hope you know that every dimension of the Holy Spirit was first taken by somebody. Hallelujah. A 
And so the Holy Spirit is telling us that we have been underutilizing His person. We have been underutilizing His ability. Our concept of His manifestation in our lives has been reduced to just miracles and tongues. But there is more to this person called the Holy Spirit. Our Paracletos, our standby, advocate, strengthener. He said, that which I speak to you in the secret, declare thou on the mountain top. Hallelujah. That's why the saints of old respected him so much. God is calling us to a point where we realize that there are infinite dimensions for access in the spirit. And there are certain things we will never accomplish until we understand that the Holy Spirit can operate in these dimensions. There are several people and ministries that are suffering today because they do not know that the help they need can be accessed in a dimension of the Holy Spirit if they make a demand on that dimension. Hallelujah. And so I choose to open up myself to every dimension that is available in this person. That dimension of him that will supply the staying grace for the journey. For many of you who are in ministry or desire to be in ministry, you need the staying grace of the Spirit. That dimension of his person. Because sometimes you will need to stand alone, but the Spirit of might will empower you. Come to a point where you are energized by the workings of his spirit empowered by this and an anointing that you yourself cannot explain hallelujah and you will run there is an operation of the holy spirit that will grant you speed in life if you if you don't place a demand you will lag and suffer in life the bible makes us to understand that when elijah told us he says saddle your ass and run for i hear the sound of the abundance of rain and then he went back he was delayed but the bible makes us to understand that the hand of the lord came upon elijah every time you hear the hand of the lord that's the operation of the spirit and it caused elijah strength and grace came upon elijah and then elijah began to run how many of you have seen people under the anointing and they do things with such speed that you know they cannot do humanly many of us cannot see beyond the manifestations that this is an operation of the holy spirit that is available when we place a demand that's why i said the hand of zerubbabel that's if that operation of the holy spirit is at work you will start a project and finish it with a dimension of speed that you cannot explain whether a building project whatever it is i tell you the truth these are some of the dimensions that god has shown us by grace and we have put it to work and the results are even getting us scared because we realize that these are the riches that's why the bible says in him dwells all fullness and you can begin to tap into different dimensions of that fullness hallelujah and it's our job to bring you tonight to that understanding that the fact that you are filled with the holy spirit hear me is no guarantee that things will you will automatically begin to experience these dimensions of him that's why we call koinonia a place of intimacy and what partnership there must be a participation in the spirit so could it be that this teaching tonight is revealing to you the answer to your prayers and saying lord how come i'm not just creative and the lord the holy spirit is saying i am available if you will beckon on this dimension of me i will cause you to come up with things that will amaze you hallelujah there is a dimension of the holy ghost that comes upon you and causes you to walk in divine health it doesn't just happen just because you are confessing the word. The Bible makes us to understand that if that same spirit 
that raised Jesus. Hold on. There is a revelation. Hallelujah. There is, why did he use raising Jesus from the dead? Paul prayed a prayer that you comprehend the kind of power and energy that was exerted when the Christ was raised from the dead. And he said, if that same spirit that can cause a decaying body, hallelujah, a decaying body by all biological standards, in an instant, breathe life and quicken that body to come alive. If that same spirit, that means if that same operation of the Holy Spirit is permitted to be activated in your life, then that same spirit will cause a quickening. If you want to do ministry you are better known the holy spirit as a quickening spirit otherwise you collapse on the stage and die one day that's why sometimes you see us walk and wonder where is this energy coming from there is a supernatural operation of the spirit for it is not by power it is not by might it's by my spirit right after this meeting we are going for a retreat stretching through till the morning and we have other activities what gives us this confidence all through i don't know any of us that have slept today who have been working since morning hallelujah but we can take advantage of this supply of his dimension and we can say spirit of god although my flesh is weak i trust your enabling grace is the holy ghost scepter of the king of kings you're the whole Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. You're changing everything in obedience to Christ. That was the activity of the Holy Spirit that brought the miracle to our brother, God's servant. Hallelujah. Brought a quickening. When you tap into the dimension of the spirit, things are not working well in your family. There's, there's no point sitting down to say whatever will be, will be. Oh God, said, we think about demons, we think about Satan, we discuss about them rather than searching from the world. What dimension of the Holy Ghost? And the best way is to find out in the Bible, where did they face my kind of problem? How did the solution come? It revealed an operation of the Spirit that I can tap into. For Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. If a dimension was accessed in Him, that dimension is still available unto us. There were men who were in famine. What dimension of the Spirit did they access that granted them authority to say by this time tomorrow? People are crying and ranting of recession. And I tell you there is a supply of the Spirit that can bring you to a point of freedom. What did Jacob do by the well that caused animals to look at black wood and begin to mate and their children come with the thought of what kind of technology, what manifestation of the spirit was supplied at that point? What dimension of the Holy Ghost was quickened in David that brought him to a point where God could call him his friend? That's why the word of God is there for us. It's not for you to cram scriptures so that you can get a nice message. It's for you to begin to search. Search out in the spirit. And when you find it, you hold on to it and say, Lord, I have found the dimension of the Holy Ghost that will create a supply for the situation that is killing me. And that's why the Bible says, the entrance of thy word to that light. You hear us shout every time the word the word because as you stay with the word there is a brooding of the spirit he knows what dimension of you that he needs that's why sometimes when you are studying the bible he tells you okay get up and begin to pray and you're praying in tongues and scriptures are coming jeremiah 17 verse 9 you're writing you're praying he's showing you what supply of his person will bring you the miracle you need when you find it, you will command authority. Let me tell you, when you find it, you have found it. The anointing from that scripture will come upon your life. Has no 
respect for your age has no respect for your gender there is a dimension of the spirit that moves solomon to offer a sacrifice that compels something about god the bible says solomon offered a thousand bond offerings do you know what one thousand bond offerings are it's not ordinary you can be in a situation and you are dying of it and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might will just come and breathe upon you and he will tell you go to the bible and you find out where certain operations of the spirit were done and you say now go and sow this seed to so 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 person and watch the wonder working power of god you are not just sowing seeds you are responding to an operation of the spirit are you understanding what i'm teaching it's the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might for every operation in the kingdom it takes the supply of the spirit hear me friends is vain to attempt to do anything in the kingdom without the holy ghost he is the lifeline the one who connects us with victory in the spirit that's why we totally depend on his person imagine if we had to use our intellect how much do we know in ourselves but for the supply of the spirit brings a dimension of wisdom a dimension of grace a dimension of power a dimension of favor a dimension of glory and beauty and honor and dominion and authority and access how can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind there's power at work in you changing everything that's what god is doing tonight in obedience to christ he's changing everything it's vain to try to do god's things without understanding how can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind it's power at work in me changing everything in obedience to Christ changing everything in obedience to Christ you're the Holy Ghost you're the Holy Ghost Spirit of the living God Power of work in you, changing everything. 
are speaking in partnership with the Holy Ghost. You are speaking in partnership with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. For the next few minutes, I'd like you to radically speak God's word. Send it to your life, address issues. If you need to carry your Bible, carry your Bible. But begin to speak. Change. Spirit, 
finances and that of our family members. Are you listening to me? It's our goal in this place that the least person here will be empowered so that we don't talk about money. We do other things. Are you following me? There are other very important things in the kingdom. It's amazing. Every church you go to, they are talking about money. Money, money, money. Satan is distracting us with our needs and we forget our assignments. But we are going to pray. We are going to say, not this place. There is a shout of a king. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Command increase. Prophesy. Speak over your family. Many of our families are suffering. Come on, pray. Enough is enough. We place a demand. That spirit that was upon Isaac, that made him so in the land where there was famine. That spirit that was upon Solomon, that made him the richest man. That spirit that was upon Job, that made him the richest man in the east.
amazed to see the kind of transformations that are happening to you. You cannot be the same though. You will begin to reign as a citizen of the kingdom. You will command victory that will scare you. Why? Because you are aligning yourself to the lifestyle and the operation of heaven. For when we know his ways and we can hear his voice and we are diligent to obey, he will set us above. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1, he says, It shall come to pass in that day that when you hearken to the voice of the Lord to do all that I have commanded you this day, he said that I will set you on high and these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you. It's a new season. Psalm 66 verse 12 Thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads We pass through water and through fire But thou brought us into a wealthy place We are walking an avalanche of miracles Impossible miracles They are only beginning it's by the supply of the Spirit When men ask you and say what in the world is happening to you you tell them it's by the spirit i believe in the ministry of the holy spirit he can change a man he can change a people and it's his presence that is at work in this place so we thank you holy spirit thank you for your help indeed you have been a helper to us We depend totally on you. We depend absolutely on you. Without you, we can do nothing. Hallelujah. 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 Please, throughout this week, I want to encourage you. Don't just study on the Holy Spirit study on your partnership with him are you listening to me get young Gicho's book the holy spirit my senior partner by david young Gicho. get other books like a mighty rushing wind by Meltari. get books about the spirit by kenneth hagen and then study it from the bible sit down and study hear me write down the areas of your life you are tired of and you need change study god's word and find out where in the bible they experience those kinds of problems is it finances look for all the scriptures you can find about the stories of famine and hardship and lack this is an assignment for everybody we are students of the kingdom hallelujah if you are struggling with sickness, that find it. Study about Job. Hallelujah. If you think you have been relegated in the background so that nobody even values you, study. How did Jesus rise from a poor Nazarene to a world figure? Are you listening to me? So this week is not the week of visitation. Traveling up and down, say, ah, we are free of you. No, that's it's time to stay with the world. Hallelujah. Stay with the world. Don't forget. I know that sometimes we can look emotional now, but when we step out of here, we just stay with the world. Are you listening to me? Stay with the world. Don't just pray. Open your Bible and study it. How amiable are your laws, O oh Lord? They are my meditation. And get tapes, Jordan bookstore is there. Buy the truth, get it, go to the media library, get books on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. How you can align yourself with Him. Hallelujah. Get books about people, how they started their ministry. Books that talk about the history of people. Let me tell you something. Look up, concentrate on how people got victorious, not their current results. Are you listening to me? Many of us are too carried away by results. Guy, if you come for communion, you see how, how did the people align themselves? Every time 
you see a man walking in glory and power and any dimension you desire stop chasing results start chasing the process what did he do how did he align himself with the spirit hallelujah you see someone commanding unending favor the person must have touched something no matter what price you have to pay find out hallelujah sometimes we play in our house messages of different ministers and men of god that we that we desire to step into their reality and while we listen there is a transfer there are impartations going on for hours we are listening to messages messages we all have already had but there's something we are contacting for as we behold we are being changed then one day you see something and a reality enters your spirit and then you begin to step in that reality that's why we encourage you and we say get these tapes get these teachings we're not just trying to promote ourselves our promotion comes from god we are giving you some have an 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 um a uh, what we call it now an opportunity giving you an opportunity to hear god's word until something enters your spirit hallelujah so this week is the time to study about our partnership with the holy spirit study on the dimensions of him that you want to see many of us need to know him as the creative one ha. it's been my personal study i've been studying that dimension of him and i will still continue studying when i come back tomorrow i'll get back to work genesis chapter one lord show me something show me something cause my eyes to see what came upon Bezalel? What came upon Bezalel that caused him to begin to flow? As you tap into that dimension of the spirit, instantly you begin to see the result. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you because you are faithful. We give you all the praise because you are changing us. I pray, Lord, that tonight's message will stay in our spirits. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because in this atmosphere there is no sickness. We have zero tolerance for sickness, zero tolerance for every oppression, zero tolerance for failure and poverty. We walk in the fullness of everything that Jesus Christ died to give us. And Lord, we thank you that even as we study from your word, cause our eyes to experience a dimension of light that will open us up to new operations of the Spirit and give us the grace to place a demand on those dimensions and see them at work in our lives. Hallelujah. You may need to get tapes. Hear me. You may need to get tapes of certain people that have operated in the spirit of certain things that you desire and play those tapes as you're listening as the tapes are played even if you are not listening to the message just stay and soak in that glory and you are praying lord let something enter into me and the spirit will enter you you will not even know something has happened until you rise up suddenly you find out that doors that will not open will begin to open are you getting blessed tonight? Lord, we give you praise. Lift up your hands and tell him thank you. We bless you. We bless you, Lord. Thank you. Because we step into supernatural realms. The nations will know that we call upon you. And that we fear you. Lord, keep making us relevant in your program and agenda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is your...
for it. You can speak and say, I am unlimited, not by power, not by might. I refuse to see challenges. I refuse to see limitation. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. My life is next. Rising from grace to grace. we are the victorious ones friends I have one guarantee no one who hears these words and pays this price now will become a failure in this life I know it it's not a prophecy it's the truth hallelujah for this is a price we are paying the Bible says there remaineth a rest unto God's people there remaineth a rest if it um, Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 10 it said there remaineth a rest there remaineth a rest and verse 12 I believe says that let us therefore labor there is a rest that is a gift come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and I will give you rest that's a gift but there is another rest that is a reward it's not a gift it said there remaineth a rest the word labor in the Greek is constrain yourself to death to enter that rest. And verse 11 says that he that has entered this rest. Oh, verse 11. Okay, verse 10, sorry now. That's all. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. There is a Sabbath. The Bible says on the seventh day God rested. Many of us are pressing to enter our seventh day. You may not understand. Some of us are in day two. Others are in day four. Others are in day five. Hear me friends. Now is not the time to give up. Because a time will come when men say there is a casting down. You will be functioning from that rest. You are paying the price now. Praying in the spirit. Is a very minute rest. Very minute rest. This rest is a reward. You press. That's why we are praying. Many of you are coming all the way from Kaduna. Many of you are coming all the way from Gaskia and very far. Many of you are to trek here. There's no money in your pocket, but you are pressing. There is a pressing. It's a pressing by faith. Laboring in the place of the world. You may not look like it. Laboring in the place of prayer. In spite of the challenges. A day will come. And the Spirit of God is supervising your press. Soon you will tell you you are in day five. And then he will tell you you are in day six. The last round. Press. Hear me. There remained a rest. There remained a rest. And the Bible tells us that anyone that enters that rest ceases from his work. Oh, I choose to press. No matter what it will cost me, this suit will not rob me. No, the organization here will. If I will kneel down and lie down to press, I will press. If I will fast to press, I will press. If I will labor in the world to press, if I will keep myself from evil to press, I will press. One day, the door will be open. Let me tell you, when you enter, you have entered. We live in a generation where people do not understand their partnership with the Holy Spirit for victory. So you can see it in the world, but then you will not press. Paul speaking said, God desired this rest even for the Israelites. But because of unbelief, they couldn't enter this rest. He said, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as he did, as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. They hardened their hearts. And he swore in his wrath, saying, they shall not enter my rest. He said, but like them, today we are hearing the word. He said, they heard the word just like we did. But they, the word did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. So friends, don't think you are doing anybody a favor by coming for koinonia. 
every time the devil tells you why are you just a church force always with God tell him I'm pressing there is a press in the spirit I may not eat food now I will take the curry brain in tongues and keep pressing for I know a day will come I will not bow to Baal. I will not compromise God's standard remember our teaching on the kingdom Satan will tell you bow and I will give you the keys God will say hold on endure he that endures to the end shall receive a crown there is a crown that he gives to suppress that's what we are here to do hallelujah god bless you we see hallelujah hallelujah let's let's continue our space we've been teaching on the kingdom for those of you who are just coming today, catch up. We're having a series of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Try to understand the concept of the kingdom life. Hallelujah. Because we realize that from scripture, God did not give us a religion. God did not give us tradition. Hallelujah. He gave us a kingdom. The summary of the Bible is that a king. Hallelujah. An eternal king who reigns produced a colony of his kingdom remember the concept of the colony hallelujah a subset of the mother kingdom and he brought us to a point where we will rule and reign and sent us a representative of the kingdom the one who connects us with the reality of the mother kingdom we call him the governor of that kingdom he's the one we call the holy spirit and he's vested with the responsibility of teaching us empowering us training us making us to be citizens of that kingdom Hallelujah. and helping us understand the constitution the modus operandi the values of the kingdom hallelujah and last week we spoke about the fact that or the week before last that jesus didn't come primarily to take us to heaven hallelujah for we were designed to rule and reign in this kind of way. Jesus primarily came to store us to the life of the kingdom, to grant unto us the keys of the kingdom that were collected from Adam. Hallelujah. And then to connect us to the governor of that kingdom who will continue an extension of his ministry in our lives. Hallelujah. Then a day will come we will be translated from, from this realm. So that the enemies of the kingdom will be judged and after that judgment we will return with our king and we will reign in partnership hallelujah Galatians ends with the beginning of a new dispensation where the citizens of the kingdom rule and reign with their king hallelujah and i did teach us that the apex of citizenship is loyalty no true citizen of any kingdom who does not pay total allegiance and loyalty in a democracy everyone lives for himself or herself hallelujah but in the kingdom system every citizen lives for the king and if at any point you were caught doing anything antagonistic to or trying to antagonize the values of the kingdom you were done what So to help us understand that God didn't give us a religion, He gave us a life, He gave us a kingdom. When Jesus walked upon the earth, all His parables were linked to the kingdom. The kingdom is like unto this, the kingdom of God is like unto this, the kingdom of heaven is like unto this. Hallelujah! And he gave us the keys to the access to the rule and And last week we considered excuse me, hallelujah. Last week we considered the fact that we need to advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. That we are on earth primarily to what? Advance the kingdom. We are not on earth just to go to school, get married, give birth to children the first person to build a nice house in your village or to buy a good jeep grow old 
write a book or two about yourself and die with this more. Hallelujah. We are on earth. Advance the kingdom. Extend the rulership, the influence. Hallelujah. Of the king. Then we spoke about the ways that we advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. How many of us remember? He taught us about four ways to advance or the methods according to God's work. areas where the church has allowed Satan to capture and many believers are falling victims. We spoke about the family life. How many of us remember that the family is a vital place where the influence of the kingdom is reached. Hallelujah. We spoke about the business world. We spoke about the media. We spoke about arts. Sports. Hallelujah. Sure, some of you will be happy we spoke about sports. Hallelujah. Because there are some people who say, Lord, I will not leave sports, just anoint me to walk there. Hallelujah. And today, very quickly, I want to talk about the lifestyle of the kingdom. Very briefly, I really want to talk about the lifestyle of the kingdom. We understood how to advance the kingdom. We must know how to live as citizens of this kingdom. How many of you are seeing your life changed by this series? Let me see your hands. Because if you really are not getting changed, then we are not making any progress. Hallelujah. Let our lives be changed. So that when they pick you at random and say, My sister, what do you understand about Christianity and the kingdom? You don't just say, I'm a Christian. Are you going to get the president? That you can let people know that God gave us a kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 10. I was walking at home this afternoon. I had a vision and uh, I saw different laggers, different kinds of lagers. They were painted in different colors. And I saw us climbing these ladders. Others were helping others climb. Others were going up, but they would come down deliberately. To help others climb, and there was such activity. I was watching, and I saw some people who were not climbing, who were standing to supervise and ensure that others were climbing. And then, at a point when they were satisfied, they would not climb like the other people, they would just look up and find themselves. Up. I believe in the spirit, this was generous. That this is what God is doing. I believe God was encouraging me with this vision to let us know that we are making progress. There was there were many um, activities around. People were climbing, others were trying to fall, others. One thing I saw that happened is that so many people were holding others and taking them again. I think that was the greatest, the most comforting part of that vision. Others would go far and then would want to fall. And then somebody, even those below, would hold them and push them. I saw this and that was all. And God didn't tell me anything about it, but I knew by the Spirit that God was describing what was happening. Not just in Kormani, but in the Church of God universal. That God is helping us. Let me tell you, friends, we are rising. Are you listening to me? We may be moving at different paces, but you are making progress. 
Don't let Satan look at you and say, Are you really making progress? Don't compare yourself with anyone. We are making progress. When Noah built the ark, the animals entered at different paces, but they all entered. The cheetah entered and the snail entered. That's why we are patient to teach the world until the least person among us becomes as great as they are. Pastor 8 of Hebrews chapter 10. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back my soul, shall have no pleasure in him. He says, now the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The lifestyle of the kingdom, hear me, is the lifestyle of faith. Are you listening to me? The lifestyle of the kingdom is the lifestyle of faith. That we come to a point where although we cannot see the king with our optical eyes, although we cannot see the governor with our optical eyes, we are absolutely convinced about their operation and we can partner with them. Hallelujah. One of the biggest um, challenge for kingdom people is that we always want to see to believe. How many of you know that in seeing is believing? Say, if I don't see it, I cannot believe it. Now, the lifestyle of the kingdom is such that the word of God becomes our eyes in the kingdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says that I is the light of the body. And then it also tells us that the entrance of this world gives light. That means there is a possibility for the world to become your eyes in the kingdom. Hallelujah. What do you need the eyes for in the physical realm? You need the eyes to see. And in that seeing you get direction. Hallelujah. Many of us need the eyes to be certain and to be convicted. Hallelujah. As a kingdom citizen, you must get to a point where the word of God becomes your eyes. The Bible says, why we look not at the things that are seen. But so we can see things that are unseen. He said, but things that are unseen. He said, for the things that are seen are temporal. The word temporal means subject to change. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Hallelujah. So when you become a citizen of the kingdom, one of the things that the governor, the Holy Spirit does, is he helps you understand that the life of the kingdom is the life of faith. Absolute trust. Hear me. Absolute 100% trust in the word of God. The integrity of his person. Hallelujah. That you get to a point where you are totally governed by God's word. You cease to walk by your sensory perceptions. Hallelujah. Because the strength of the flesh is your senses. Hallelujah. And for many people, we are happy only when good things happen around us. Hallelujah. You are encouraged that there is a God only when your optical eyes can see something nice. When you hear a good report. You see, we, we have been trained in a world where our convictions come primarily from the interaction of our senses with this world. Are you following me now? So when your parents get promoted, you are happy. And then you sing, you say, God, you are good, you are good, you are good. But when you begin to walk with the Holy Ghost, He begins to train you. And He trains you by causing you to lose confidence in your senses. He brings you to a point where you no longer trust your senses to give you the convictions. Hallelujah. He makes his word more superior to your sensory perception. And brings you to a point where you can hold on to his word. That his word becomes your reality. Are you following me now? And when that happens, your language will change. Because people speak according to what they see. Is that correct? 
when the word of God becomes your eyes then the words that you speak will be consistent with what you are seeing so that when men say there is a casting down and you say there is a lifting up people look at you and say are you stupid but then you tell them I'm a citizen of a foreign kingdom Jesus said my kingdom is not of this world are you following me now so faith is the lifestyle of the kingdom unfortunately for many people they have decided to pick certain aspects of the kingdom and then for others say faith is not necessary faith is for a word of faith people and so on and so forth faith is the lifestyle of the kingdom that our impulses in the kingdom are a derivative of what the word of god tells us are you following me now not what you are seeing we have so many believers who go and yell at god god you are not faithful god you are not this god you are not that but then you become a true citizen of the kingdom when you see the things that happen around you these are things that can weigh you down but then as a citizen of the kingdom you are right. there's no money at home and your parents are running elder skelter and you tell them we are blessed and they look at you and say we understand you these foolish children and you tell them no 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 i'm not trying to pretend it i'm not trying to convince myself i'm drawing forth from a reality based on what i have seen then you sing you don't have to worry i like that song and don't you be afraid hallelujah and while you're singing people cannot understand and you tell them i hear in my spirit the abundance of rain and while you are saying that they just demote your father and you say i still hear the sound of the abundance of rain and people say now we understand this child is getting married. and then you enter and shut the door and they are waiting to hear you cry and all they hear is thank you jesus say lord i thank you i praise you and your auntie doesn't have a child and then she turns and she says, lord i thank you because i'm a mother of nations and she goes to the market to buy baby kids and we will say now i have a madam it is embarrassing not enough and then suddenly the king of this kingdom sees true citizens of the kingdom let me tell you something friends do you know why the angels respect us so much they are compelled by the awe and the majesty of god that they see are you following me now you know for many of you i've had an encounter with jesus christ when i saw him all i can remember is that i was a dead man on the floor i still don't know how his face looks like I was seeing him and he just stretched forth his hands towards me and a beam of light the entrance of thy word given light that was supernatural impartation directly by himself hallelujah and I got up with a supernatural encounter that I've not recovered from till this day and I'm not sure I will recover forever hallelujah so for many of us who say God I need to do a discussion with you if I meet God, I will tell him this, I will tell him that you think so. Brothers and sisters, if it is the real Jesus you see, you will clap for yourself if you have the gods to at least look at him. And you will understand why Isaiah said, Woe is me. The holiness and the majesty and the awe. So when he directs the angels, the angels find it an honor. They say it's an honor to serve the king. But then when the angels look at the earth realm, then they see one who has never seen a vision. You don't know how God looks like. Yet you, you were not born when the Bible was written. Yet you say, Lord, I believe. And the angels say, what is this? And even in the midst of challenges, you say, I believe. I believe. My voice is gone. I believe. Lord, I believe. And the angels wonder. And they say, what's going on? And you begin to speak and say, my life is blessed. 
although you cannot see what is happening in the realm of the spirit the word of god becomes your eyes at that point you become a true citizen of the kingdom and hear me friends it takes a while it takes a while for you to begin to live by faith don't let anybody make you feel bad it takes a while and let me tell you how god does it he, beca he begins to dethrone everything that gives you strength and conviction outside his word until you are reduced with nothing but him he causes every other thing you trust aside from him not to work for you and then you find out that you are left with only one option and you say yes you are the king i finally agree of kings because a time will come your intellect will be too crippled to continue the journey a time will come your money will be your connection and everything you do at that point you will begin to lose confidence in every other thing and he will make you so inadequate that if you ever take a step outside him you'll feel like dying then you begin to sing steve's song and i before you hallelujah he brings you to a point where he's not just your god he's your life that you know that if you ever take a step without him you are dead see it's not ordinary for you to love god so much that you can lose everything for him you must come it happens by an experiential revelation that he's your life God will test everything that you have that you exalt to be God. There are many things that represent God in our lives. For many people, it's money, silver and gold. For many people, it's charisma and fame and influence. For many people, it's anointing. For many people, it's ministry. God is such a jealous God that you will dethrone everything. So every time you come into God's presence, as you fellowship with him, you know what is happening? There is a death process going on. It is a dethroning of everything. And then he keeps rising above the list. Until he gets to that point where he sits at the seat of your heart. At that point, nothing else moves you. The things of this world will seize their grip over your life. Hallelujah. And there are many people who when it's time to worship God, as you kneel down, you just remember, ah, I bought this 30,000. There's still a process of death that needs to go on in your life. Because you come to a point where you live totally based on His word. Can I tell you something? Most of the, the sorrow and the, the grief that many believers have is because they do not understand the faith life. Are you following me now? A dead man cannot feel it even if you match him. Is that correct? A dead man cannot feel it even if you insult him. When you criticize a dead man, what's his response? Many of us are so sensitive and overreactive. And that's because we are still alive in ourselves. We have not come to a point where the word of God becomes our life. Are you listening to me? When you get to that point, no matter how attractive a thing is, if it is not you get to a point in your life where if it is not consistent with God's word, I am not ready. Let me ask you a question. How many of you can truly say right now inside and outside? That you have gotten to a point in your life where you can say if the word of god does not lead me i'm not ready to move how many of you here can come to a point where you say every success i don't care how attractive it is if it is not founded on the word of god i'm not interested there are many of us praying and trusting god i'm a millionaire the day even if the satan that waves five naira that's how you follow you say god will settle it later but the faith life is the life that is absolutely tied on the word of god hallelujah that 
my joy my satisfaction my fulfillment is a perfect derivative of God's word I find no other satisfaction outside his word his word represents my fulfillment I believe his word you are not a believer because you just came out for altar call you are a believer because you have come to a point where the word of God is king over your life I believe every truth in God's word I will die believing it if I never experience anything that looks like success in my life I've said it here and here again God forbid but if I die of sickness, the last word that will come out from my mouth before I die is by his stripes I am healed. I have come to a point where I don't believe God's word because of the results it will produce. I don't have any other option. Even if the word of God never produces a result. If God tells me now, Josh, the whole concept of heaven, it was just my way of making you love me. I said, God, no problem. I have so long as I will be with you. If you will be in hell, that's where I want to be. I come to a point where my life is governed by the word of God. Hear me friends, this is the secret of success that many believers fail to live by and they get whipped and punished again and again. You must get to a point where the word of God becomes the governing factor of your life. Please hear me inside and outside and take seriously what I'm saying. The kingdom life is a faith life. The prosperity, the success, the increase and the fulfillment of a believer is tied to the voice of God and the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. It says, if thou will um, diligently hearken also to the voice of God, he said, it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commands which I commanded this day he said that the Lord will the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the earth verse 2 and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken we have a bunch of stubborn believers that don't know how to obey the principles of their king hear me friends God created this universe he has put a principle to govern your life is one definition of foolishness to live outside the word of God we try to live outside God's word and we want the blessings that are in the world hallelujah A true citizen of the kingdom is number one one who is loyal to the king but number two one who makes the word of God his priority 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 it's not the issue of being spiritual or not it's your life he said my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings he said do not let them depart from your heart Keep them in the midst of your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life to those who found them. You program yourself to be a victor and a success in life. When you allow the word of God govern every step of your life. We are where we are by the grace of God. Simply because we have inclined ourselves to hear the voice of God. I will do nothing in my life without the voice of God. I will do nothing. I will go nowhere. I cherish his voice and I cherish his word. Because his word and his voice are one. The word of God is my life. The word of God is my life. Everything the word of God says not to do, I will not do it. I will not try it and see what happens. I'm not ready. Hallelujah. The Bible says for you to be a tiger. He says that's the way the heavens are open. There's no point arguing. People argue and say this and that. And they are chopping our money in the church. And so on and so forth. And then they remain poor. They remain broke. And they get angry at those who are prospering. That's the point. If you refuse to obey God's word. You will always feel angry at those who are obeying it. Hallelujah. And then the Bible 
Bible says God gives grace to the humble he said your peace are proud when I find this in the world I align my life by the Spirit and then you begin to see unending grace I mean unending inexplainable grace dimensions of grace that even you the carrier cannot explain hallelujah he said if he be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land see hear me friends you must take this word seriously search the scriptures you are not trying to be spiritual by doing it it's your life hallelujah I believe God's word I believe what God's word says about me this is my life this is the constitution of my life I'm not doing it because I have the responsibility in ministry to prepare a message no it's my life can you get to that point where you are totally governed by the word of God if you tell me to drink and smoke I will not just tell you no if I tell you no that's not enough I will tell you no because it is against the constitution of my kingdom are you following me now if someone comes to meet me and say Josh let's compromise the way of God I'll tell him no I am bounded by the word of God I put my life on the line and I tell you the truth friends I have tested it I can tell you this word works this word works you see Peter said that which we have seen that which we have heard he said that which our hands have handled these are the things that we speak I have one guarantee it may not come as fast as you want but if you stay with this word it will build an enviable future for you every other factor notwithstanding hear me there is no challenge you want to face in this life or you are facing now that someone has not faced a worse one people have come out of all imaginable challenges to emerge gloriously in life there's none of us here that has an excuse so why do so many believers experience weakness and setbacks in their lives although they are called kings i'll tell you why it's not because they are not filled with the holy ghost it's not because they don't have a bible it's not because they don't come to church they have not come to a point where beyond church and religion are you listening to me i don't separate my personal life my spiritual life as it were everything is centered around the world whatever i'm doing with you that is not directly linked to the world i'm not interested call me a fanatic but i'll still be successful and you will need me badly hallelujah are you following me so in the kingdom life we must come to a point where you see friends you hear us talk about this word of god thing this word of god thing. take it seriously we have seen some of our fathers who kept this word and in their old age they proved everything that scripture a man tell us born he lived the prosperity of the scripture he healed the sick he casted out devils he raised the dead he has fulfilled every mandate that my eyes can see that god said the citizens should fulfill humorously Jimmy keeps saying it that he must do everything the Bible says we should do before he goes to be with the Lord he has healed the sick he has casted out devils I think it's just remaining the dead hallelujah and he challenges himself every time I remember one time I went to pray for a dead man he was dead three days hallelujah and we went to the uh, faculty of medicine I said I should come and I went in and I saw all kinds of dead men I said where is he where is and then they led me to the dead man when I looked at him three days dead you better have faith you or at least you better know God you have to believe in something in that and I laid my hands on him called for the spirit prayed I did it three times when he didn't wake up i told the people get me out of this place get me out of this place remember my saying i'm not jesus christ i didn't die for anybody's sins i didn't collect money from everybody in everything god is still glorified and i encourage the people i told them make plans for the burial 
Jesus is Lord. We who are alive should press into God and love Him more. How about that? Now, you may laugh at me, but the next time I go to pray for a dead body, for many of you, your first challenge will be to look at one. If you will ever raise a dead man, you have to stand before one. From faith to faith. Hallelujah. So God keeps training your faith. Can I tell you something, friends? You must stop complaining and shouting. Change your perception over situations and circumstances. Are you following me? I was born by this. I see every situation and challenge that comes as an opportunity to be strong in faith. To become a better citizen of the kingdom. And that's why I, I never, never get angry and offended. I know it sounds like I'm very, very serious about what I'm saying. To come to a point where I'm depressed. The judge was one of the kind, man. This kingdom thing. I know that God is a good God. And I know that His word is true. He reigns. He reigns. Help me worship us. My voice is gone. He is standing by my side. To bring His word to pass. To bring His word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. Oh, He reigns. He reigns. My God. He's an awesome If we spend half the time we spend on movies, on the world if we spend half the time we spend going from pillar to post to beg uncles and aunties on the world am i challenging you if we spend half the time looking for connection this and that and that i've told you this thing in this place and i'll say it again take your eyes off men they will disappoint you again and again and again the best of every man is still a man Oh, but I know one who can be trusted. I know one who can be trusted. He said, by this time tomorrow, Kabo Satawaya. Only God can make that audacious statement. And look at your life and say, by this time, by this time, mercy prosper. Nigeria will be celebrating you. By this time, the world will begin to come to pass. Only God can make that kind of statement. But can I tell you something? The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. The secrets of the Lord are not with everybody. They are not with every Christian. They are with them that fear him. Another word there is them that are serious with him. You can't be one leg in here, one leg out. Lord, I love you, things are working. Lord, I hate you, things are not working. You must come to a point where you say, if I perish, I perish that you hold on to God's word I never allow myself to speak anything outside God's word no one will preach me into that thing I will never call myself a failure because God's word never called me a failure this is the principle of the kingdom are you following me now I am not weak and beggarly I am everything the word of God says I am but how can you walk in light of a truth you do not know how will you know it until you search it out there are many of us who don't even have Bibles you have all kinds of dictionary you have 48 laws of power 96 laws of increase 25 laws of victory and you don't have a Bible I am I guarantee you you are not yet successful or oh, one the fire pointed to one side and then it starts from Matthew chapter 5 and then we pride in these things and then you hold your bible and chuck it at the side of your pocket hmm. they are life to those who find them and help to their flesh you see this bible forget how ugly and old it looks there is life i'm sucking out the life in this bible i believe it with all of my heart there is nothing this world cannot do for you there is no problem hear me it always looks impossible until you see the result that the word of god brings it always looks impossible is it a job is it debt is it financial hardship 
is it your life is it sickness and disease i am confident let let eternity prove me wrong but i am confident that this is the believer's way of life oh i believe the word the word of god tells me that jesus christ left the holy spirit to school me and to build me i am confident i have the holy spirit i'm confident my confidence is not because i'm praying in tongues my confidence is because the word of god says so i like a beautiful song that um many of us those of us who have the privilege of attending sunday school some of us didn't attend you always run away they say come on sunday school that's where you go and cause trouble you scratch people's car you paint things you steal money you buy ice cream with your offering he says jesus loves me this i know why he didn't say because i'm a male or a female for the bible tells me so for can you come to a point in your life where your confidence in life is because the word of god says i believe god's word i believe god's word the word of god is the basis of my life i walk by the word i talk the word i leave the word i act the word i truly believe this word i'm not saying it because i'm preaching i truly believe the word of god that's why i invest in the word that's why i invest in the word for many of you all you have is free our daily manner that they share during one conference you will never how come we don't invest in the things of the kingdom hallelujah we buy clothes we buy Gucci shoes and everything and we pride let me tell you you are an insecure man if all that you have is suit and money and cars and all of these things the word of God show me a man that has nothing in this life but God's word I show you one who the world will celebrate but show me a one a man that that's why I don't envy any unbeliever I don't care what he has they are standing on slippery ground the recession has shown us people woke up overnight and became poor and broke the world millionaires now I'm not ready for that kind of life I need a life that is founded upon the rock hallelujah can you reduce the key let me sing the very beautiful school some of us who came from bottom north it's time for you to appreciate me hallelujah my hope is built on nothing less than jesus love let you call self and right only i i cannot trust that's a powerful song sweet as rain other ground there are many grounds grounds of connection grounds of money grounds of I know this I know that grounds of intellect I'm telling you the truth they are sinking many people are suffering and languishing and getting disappointed that after all of their education and their strength in themselves it still looks like Satan is still above them but the true citizen of the kingdom is one who cherishes the words of the king knowing that the king is a loving king and he will not tell you what to destroy you hallelujah we're going to pray for five minutes and then you sit down and then i'll finish up just hold your bible and we're going to pray in tongues if you truly came with one hold your bible you want to embrace it embrace it we are going to pray in tongues for five minutes that god you impart a desire for your word go ahead and pray please make sure this is not the time to pinch and look at your neighbor take it seriously this is a training i believe your word i have no other option Come on, pray in the spirit. 
That's why you came. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Inside and is my dying life. Your word is my life. I need by your principles. No compromise. I need Hold your Bible. Hold your Bible. Hold your Bible. Pray in the spirit. I take your word seriously. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be seated. When you get to that point in your life where you respect God's word, where you value God's word, he said, How amiable are your laws? They are my meditation all day long. Buy an MP3, buy an iPod, stuff your phone with the word of God. Messages that teach you the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Get worship songs. Lie down in your room and saturate yourself. Faith is coming into your spirit as you hear. You may lie down in a little room with nothing to eat, but there is an investment. You are becoming a true citizen of the kingdom. And you keep pressing in the spirit from day one to day two to day three. One day you will step into the seventh day and it will, you cannot even stop the cycle of victory and success that will begin to follow. We have a lot of believers lazy at the word. Oh, pray for me. Pray for that. Especially in the south. That's why they like prophets. As an antidote to their laziness. People who will not stay with God's word. Let me tell you something. There are some things that even one gallon of olive oil will not do for you. You've got to stay in God's word. Are you listening to me? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly Colossians 3 16 let the word of Christ dwell in you so let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in sounds and hymns and spiritual songs you get to that point in your life where you live by the word where you talk by the word your friend comes to meet you and say how oh, is the struggle now and you tell him no I appreciate you but God is watching I belong to a kingdom and that kingdom has an economic system every opportunity you have you are talking about the kingdom what are the consequences men will insult you men will call you a fanatic so what about it Hallelujah. Many of you will break out of certain associations you cherish on account of your seriousness with God. Love is a command in the Bible. There's no command that you must relate with everybody. The Bible says, What fellowship has light got to do with darkness? Would light got to do with darkness? And what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? Hallelujah come to a point where you get serious can we get to that point where everyone who attends koinonia is serious with the word of god i don't mean this hypocritical seriousness that we just do when we are looking for something crash christianity that there's there's a situation at hand and then everybody becomes serious no it must become your life how serious are you with 
the principles of God's word. The Bible talks about tithing, for instance. How many of you are truly committed to tithing? Ah, God understands. Let me tell you something. God will not change his rules because of you. He didn't change it because of Jesus Christ. He will not change it because of you. The wages of sin is death. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Jesus died. At his death, he cried and said, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabatani. The father still didn't change his mind. Let me tell you something. If you think you keep violating God's word and get away with it, can I tell you something? A time will come you will face a bitter, not because God will punish you, it will be the consequences of obeying his, disobeying his principles. Hallelujah. Speaking the word, for instance, for many of us, we feel that it's not an important thing, and we feel embarrassed speaking the word. Just a guy, this thing makes people like children, this coin on yourself. How can a mature person just be jumping and be saying, I am this, I am that? But when you are in trouble, you talk about it. You see, no, with your mouth, you use and confess it. You keep talking, you tell everybody from Pilar, I am in trouble. I am in trouble. Why can't you speak and say, I am victorious? So says the word of God. You mustn't have a special prayer time. You can be on your way, you can be in your job. You say in the name of Jesus, the word of God works. The word of God is producing the character of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says, What fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? The word of God gives us boundaries as believers. Hallelujah. And so that we live by the principle of faith. See, faith is our concept of faith. I thank God God is helping us. Because for many believers, our concept of faith has just been a spiritual operation used to receive things. That's the general concept of faith that is taught in church. But I'm teaching you today that faith is a way of life. Right, follow me now. For many of us, we think faith is only an operation when you need to receive something. No, faith is your way of life. Faith is the way of life that is governed by the word of God and the voice of God. Governed by the principles of the kingdom. God is speaking to us this night. That if we seriously want to become citizens of the kingdom, take God's word seriously. Job. The richest man in the east gave us a blueprint of his success he said in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle the bible called him the richest man in the east he was so blessed he had children he had everything that represented success david tells us his secret a man who loved god and had everything life could offer he said create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me he said, cast me into me from your presence. It was David that said, how amiable are your laws, O Lord. They are my meditation all day long. He said, as the deer pants after the water, but so my soul pants after it. Hallelujah. I bring to you a very simple but life-changing teaching tonight. That you must come to a point where the word of God becomes your principle of operation. No matter what is happening around me, if the word of God tells me otherwise, I choose God's word. Are you listening to me? I don't need to wear an expensive shoe to know God is faithful. The word of God tells me already that his name is faithful and true. Are you listening to me? I believe God's word. God is asking us a question and it's not a general question God is asking you God is asking you do you believe my word in I be in your fashion uh, design school and whatever do you believe God's word do you believe God's word God is asking a serious question to a believer is not just one who has gotten born again a believer is one who has come to a point where his entire life revolves around has nothing to do with the church you attend has nothing to do with your denomination this is the secret of life 
I was told a humorous story about a man, a very wealthy man, who had some very stubborn children. And there was this young boy among them. And he wrote his will, and you know, just shared so many things. And then, when he was about to die, he called the son. And he said, son, come. And he said, I'm about to die. And he brought out a brand new Bible. And he gave it to the son. He said, this is what I will give you. It will make you a champion and it will change your life. And then the father died. And the child threw the Bible away and tried to make it on his own. The child suffered so much until he, I mean he suffered so much. And then one day in his frustration, after hitting himself from pillar to post, he came to a point where he decided to pick up the Bible, at least just to look at it. And when he opened the Bible, he was just reading, reading, he wasn't even getting the point. And then mistakenly, he turned to the last page of the Bible and he saw a check that his father left. And the father said, if he takes the Bible seriously, then he should see that check. And if he sees the check, that was all his inheritance. And from this story, it was a true story, someone was sharing something that I heard a preacher. And when he saw it, he broke down and he because for years the father deliberately put the check at the last page of the bible and said there is no how he can take this bible seriously without at least turning to the last page to see and while this guy was suffering the empires of his father were being occupied by banks and financial institutions because nobody could claim them and here was the inheritance that the father left with him do you know that applies to many of us we have been running and crying over what the word of god can give us as kingdom citizens we must come to a point where we separate ourselves and stay with the lord what challenge are you going through now what area of life is not working for you have you ever taken out time to stay with god's word diligent study with god's word And watch the hand of the Lord transform your life. God is bringing this word tonight to draw us back to the place of the world. That as citizens of the kingdom, as ordinary as this book looks, it contains the values of the kingdom. And if you take it seriously and then respect the governor of that kingdom, how come we respect men more than God? If I walk to you now and I tell you, come and collect a check of five million naira, you'll be so glad. And you even announce to your friend, you say, I'm hammer. But how come the word of God says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said God. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and a hope. And many times we turn to God and shout and yell and insult and say, God, you are not faithful. Can you let the word of God become your eyes tonight? You say, Lord, I believe your word. I choose to believe. I'm not just believing your word because of the results it will produce. I have come to a point where your word is life. And I live by the operation of the word of God. It's what the Bible calls faith. Faith is not necessarily about receiving. Faith is about living according to the word of God. And we are going to pray. And I really want us to pray and say, God, for many of us, we need to pray and say, Lord, Please let there be a baptism of a desire for your word. A desire for your word. For many of us, morning till night, you are visiting friends, everybody. Oh, visit this, visit that, visit that. Can you stay with God's word and take God's word seriously? I don't just mean opening the Bible and putting it on your chest and sleeping till night. I mean being alert. Wake up. Study God's word. Pray it into your life. Believe the principles and constrain your life to live by it. I have one guarantee. You will emerge with success. You will emerge victorious. And we are going to pray. We have one simple desire that the word of God will put, that the Holy Ghost will put a desire for intimacy with him and for his word in our lives are you listening to me
bigger than ministry that we begin to live like true citizens of the kingdom so that you don't come to a point where you say something and people turn and say sorry are you born again for many of us tonight you came for koinonia but god is asking you when will you be serious with my ways the bible said he showed israel his acts but to moses he showed moses his ways you know what his ways are his principles if i give you one thousand naira, you still need me to get it tomorrow if i show you how i got it you will be able to get it when i want it again. he showed the israelites wanted his acts you know what we are teaching here by the grace of god the ways of god it's not just enough for you to see power and anointing but it's for you to also understand the operation of the spirit so that you begin to command perpetual victory hallelujah and so we are going to pray in the next 10 minutes i don't know how you are going to cry to god you want to lie down you want to now it's not the time to pinch people and just smile and say that was the message you I can ask that after the program hallelujah now is the time to rise up rise up on your feet everyone please can we inside and outside we are going to raise a cry and say lord i take your word and your ways seriously 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 i stake my life at your word i believe your word i'm a doer a doer of that word lift up your voice and begin to pray the lifestyle of the kingdom is the lifestyle of faith the lifestyle of the word speaking the word doing the word living the word knowing the word the word of god is all i know of our fathers lived it their lives have become an epistle for us to follow the bible says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise through faith staking their lives they encountered impossible situations yet the word of god brought them out lift up your voice and begin to pray oh i take your word seriously it's my life hallelujah it's my life inside and outside say lord i take your word seriously they are alive to those who find them they are alive if you care to find it it will be life to you and health is a secret of divine health is a secret of divine protection it's the secret of increase the secret of favor the word of god living in me living in me come on pray raka ba 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 sataya lembra taka tafegene belerebosh raka ba 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 i take your word seriously i take your word seriously no matter what happens to me go ahead and pray i refuse to look at the things that i see i refuse to look at the sickness in my body i refuse to look at the challenge in my family i look at your word come on go ahead and pray god is faithful by whom we were called into the fellowship of his son god is faithful he will not lie by these two immutable things it is impossible for god to lie the just shall live by faith by the operation of god's word for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the endless expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. Living by the word will make you a champion. Living by the word will make you the head and not the tail. I'm not just talking about climbing scriptures the word leave the word speak the word obey the word totally 100 percent obedience come on obtain grace obtain grace obtain grace come boldly before the throne of grace come boldly don't come with timidity you are 
are washed in the blood of the Son of God. You are holy. You are pure. You are righteous. Say, Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace inside and outside. Make sure you're praying. Grace to live by the word. No matter what I see. No matter what I feel. No matter what the doctors are saying. No matter what the economy is saying. No matter what situations and circumstances are saying. I live by the word. I live by the word. Sheba Bayeda Raya. Sheba Baseka Kabara. Rakata Braka Seke Tebele Bosch. I live by the word. Dedicate your life. Commit yourself to the practice of the word. Say, Lord, grace. Grace to stay with the world. Grace to be a student of the world. Grace. Who are down mountain before Zerubbabel? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. At the shout of grace. At the shout of grace. At the shout of grace. Go ahead and declare. Grace to be a doer of the world. Grace to let the word of God become your eyes. Go ahead and pray. Say the word becomes my eyes. My perception is based on the word. My response to life is based on the word. My reaction is based on the word. My convictions are based on the word. My confidence is based on the word. I believe the word. I respect the word. I live by the values of the word. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word abideth forever. Hallelujah. You are truly not a citizen of the kingdom until you begin to live by the word. Jesus said to Satan, said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Bread there is a prophetic symbolism of your sensory perception. He said, but by every word, man can live by every word. I live by his every word. His every word for my health. His every word for my finances. His every word for this ministry. His every word for all that concerns me. I believe his word that his thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil. I know I have a blessed tomorrow. I know my tomorrow is greater than my today. Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone. Pair yourselves into two as we take this next prayer point. Please take it seriously. You're going to speak. I like you to take it seriously, instrumentalist. I like you to follow us as we pray. Hallelujah. You're going to begin to speak God's word into that person's life and say, In the name of Jesus, every blessing I know the word of God says, keep speaking the blessing over their health, over their finances. Go ahead and pray. Take it seriously. You shall not die, but live. You are healthy. You are strong. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the country. You are above. Pray. Pray. You are the head and not the tail. You are victorious in this life. You are more than a conqueror. You come out of every predicament. You come out of every challenge. Go weeping and doors for a night. But joy, 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 joy comes to the morning. Joy, go weeping and doors for the night. Joy. Pray for your neighbor. Call him the head. Call him the best. Call him anointed. Call him victorious. The word of God 
will bring you out of that sickness, will bring you out of that failure, will bring you out of that tragedy. Release grace, prophesy grace, prophesy grace to your neighbor, grace to live by the word, grace to obey the spirit of God, grace to respect the values of the kingdom. Speak over their families. Your family is coming out of every challenge. Yes, they may have cried. They are coming out. They are coming out. They are coming out by the word of God. Out of that financial situation. They are coming out. Jesus will be glorified in your life. Jesus will be glorified. You are lifted. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. From glory to glory. Grace to grace. Power to power. Increase to increase. Victory to victory. Grace to say no to sin. Grace to say no to Satan. Grace to say no to every deceitful practice of the flesh. Grace to say no to every way that is not of God. No matter how accepted it is by society. Grace to ride against the existing status quo. Inside and outside, the Lord is standing where you are praying. Take it seriously. Grace, grace, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Very quickly, just in one or two minutes, the Lord just instructed me for us to do this. Hallelujah. You're going to speak the word grace upon your life. Are you listening to me? That's what God says. I tell them. He said, tell them to release grace upon themselves. I know that many of us do not understand the power of grace. See, the grace of God can do for you what you will not be able to do all your life. The grace of God will make your life sweatless. I'm telling you. It's the grace of God that can say you sleep in the prison today and wake up as a prime minister tomorrow. Is the grace of God that took Hadassah from a hamlet and made her queen. The grace of God made Daniel to reign through the dispensation of three kings. Go ahead and prophesy grace upon yourself. Take it seriously. Grace at the shout of grace. Grace. Grace over my finances. Over my life. Haya. Kapo Sotobaya. Grace. The grace of God exalting me. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn, and I'm anointed with fresh oil. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. Grace, I shout it. Grace, the unmerited favor, the unmerited favor. Lord, according to your instruction, we are shouting grace. Grace over your family. Grace over your body. The Bible says, who are down mountain before Zerubbabel. Grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For many of you who can turn, we are rounding up. Zechariah chapter 4. We are citizens of the kingdom. We are not ordinary. We know the laws of the kingdom. Zechariah chapter 4. If you can project it, that would be great. Zechariah chapter 4. Verse 
verse 6 Zechariah 4 verse 6 If you are there say Amen, amen. Then he answered and spoke unto me saying This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel saying Not by power nor by might hmm. he said not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the lord god of hosts verse 7 who art thou O great mountain he said before zerubbabel before joshua selman he said who art thou O great mountain he said before joshua selman Thou shalt become a plain. Hear me. Listen. He said, And ye shall bring forth the headstone thereof with the shoutings of grace. Grace. Hallelujah. I hope that we'll have time. And then another time we'll talk on the grace of God. We're out of time. But I want you to go back home. See, hear me. Before you sleep tonight. I like you to take even if it's just five minutes and shout this grace upon your life beyond your ability covering for your inadequacies the unmerited favor and access that the Lord gives a man he said Jacob have I loved Esau have I hated he didn't give us a reason grace hallelujah father we thank you for tonight's meeting let your word truly find a place in our hearts. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. We receive grace to be doers of the word. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.